It's beer o'clock on Real Ale Craft Beer. Today we've got a can of Halne Mockney, 7% ABV. Mockney meaning strong. So Halne strong. There's a picture of a bear on the front and they're pretty strong as well, aren't they? It's a 7% ABV can of lager and a 500ml can. Um, it's been brewed by Van Per. Now Van Per, if I understand, also brews the Orangi Boom or the OJ brands of beers these days. Uh, Van Per have two breweries in the south of Poland. Uh, this has been brewed in either one of those breweries in the south of Poland. It was all in the Polish language so it was very difficult for me to kind of work out which brewery it came from but it's south Poland. Uh, without further ado let's get this beer out into a glass and see what we get. So Van Per have obviously found a space in the market to produce cheap, strong lagers. Some of the Orangi Boom beers that they brew, you can get their regular Pilsner at 5% ABV, Orangi Boom Pilsner. You can probably buy a regular Pilsner from Halle that's 5% ABV. But what this company has really tapped into really is the corner shop um, cheap strong lager market that's where they can see their growth that's where that's where they can see their their area of the market they're not into producing fabulous beer they're not into producing stouts and porters and saisons and double ipas and ipas this is purely van per going after the strong beer market that was once dominated by the greats you know yeah your Carlsberg Special Brew, your Tenant Super, your Kestrel Super. They've seen that market and they've tapped into it and they've been able to undercut these breweries from Scotland. Remember Skull Super? All these great beers from the night. Well, not necessarily great beers, but but great beer brands. That's what I'm looking for. Great beer brands from from the, the 70s, 80s, 90s. And then all of a sudden we've seen these, the, 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 we've seen this market being taken over by Eastern European companies. But that's fine, that's fine. Because at the end of the day, I don't think the person who buys this style of lager really cares where it comes from. At this point, buying a four pack of, uh, uh, of Halley for 7% ABV. I'm not here to judge. I'm not here to judge. Um, I'm here to review the beer. So here we go. Just I just wanted to give you a little bit of in, information, a little bit of in, insight into the brewery and the beer before we got into the, the actual beer review. So slow moving carbonation. Head has dissipated really, really quickly. There's no head on this beer whatsoever. It's freezing cold as per advised me drink this beer. I have drunk these beers before at room temperature and they're very interesting. They're very interesting at room temperature. There's a lot of funny chemical taste coming through. But freezing cold, you generally don't get too much of that chemical taste, which the brewer wants. Amber in colour, let's get the aroma. There's, I think there's a secret in brewing these beers. It's like there's a signature aroma, a signature taste with these beers. It's like a sweet, malty, slightly kind of cherryish. There's a bit of kind of like a fruit flavour going on in there. And it, it underlines, it underpins every single one of these beers. If you drank Special Brew, if you drank Kestrel, if you drank Tenant Super, if you drank this, this Halne Mockney 7% ABV strong lager, they all seem to have this funny, and let's get into it, regular taste that's in these strong lagers, these cheap strong lagers. Yeah, there it is. There it is. Um, it's just a... It's, it's, it's quite a dry flavour. It's a nicely carbonated beer. 
Then you get this sweet kind of slight grain, slight maize. I think my nose tingle actually. It's enough to kind of just, I don't know, maybe maybe I'm going to get one of those big conks one day. You know, one of those big red conks if I, if I kind of drink too much of this beer. <laughs> It's a, it's a regular taste that seems to be all of these brewers, brewers who brew these strong lagers. I think that they, I think the recipes just got out there. I think somebody's visited one of these breweries who, who originally produced these strong beers. Maybe it was Carlsberg Special Brew or maybe it was, it was Kestrel or maybe it was one of the other ones, Tenant Super, Skull Super. Maybe a brewer who, who kind of had this recipe has left this company and now he's kind of put it out there, widely available for other people to copy. And it certainly does feel like it's being copied. It's somehow incredibly drinkable. Make no mistake, this 7% ABV cheap strong lager is deceptively drinkable. If I wasn't trying to pick out flavours here, being a, a proper reviewer, and if I was inclined or if I had that way about me that I wanted to drink this strong lager, then if I wanted my fix, if you like, my daily fix of strong lager, and I didn't have much money, then this would be the what, what I would kind of chase down. This, this would be the thing I'd be looking for in my local corner shop. It's just cold and wet. And I think the most important thing is unoffensive. It's unoffensive. There's no off flavours in this beer. It's got a slight kind of weird kind of lemonade -y flavour to it. Um, I think the important thing is the alcohol is well hidden as well. The alcohol is well hidden in this beer for a 7% ABV beer. It's either that or, or I've got used to drinking alcohol now finally and a 7% beer doesn't really affect me anymore. I think it's the reason why a lot of countries have brought out this kind of like, or at least in the UK anyway, there's a 7.5% ABV alcohol tax now that kicks in when a beer goes over 7.5% ABV. It's the reason why Special Brew used to be 9%, now it's 75 and the same goes with Tenant Super. It's the reason why they they lowered their ABV down to 7.5% ABV, is to cotton on and not have to pay that tax. Kestrel Super is still 9%. They've carried on brewing that beer at 9% ABV. But I'm going to rate this. Halne, Mockney, Van Per. So you're basically buying a rebadged Orangi Boom here that's made in Poland. It looks good. Actually, it doesn't. Actually, it doesn't look very good. It smells slightly sweet and syrupy, and it tastes slightly sweet and syrupy. Unoffensive taste. Still something that I wouldn't choose to go and buy myself. So for that reason, I'm going to go 4 out of 10. This is a 4 out of 10 from Real Ale Craft Beer. Please put your comments in the comments box. Subscribe to our daily beer and food reviews. Give us a big fat thumbs up. Boom! Cheers.